Hello, I am Dr. Kaurav Lutra and I am practicing in the city of uh, Dehradun in the foothills of the Himalayas and uh, I will be speaking to you today on this new uh, uh, technique that we have been using uh, with this new molecule uh, called phenocaine assisted cataract surgery which has made life uh, much much easier for us uh, in uh, certain situations and I will be taking you through my journey of uh, using phenocaine over the last few years and testing it out and now is uh, easily available to all of us. So, mitriasis, as we all all cataract surgeons know, is a prerequisite for a safe and predictable cataract surgery. And uh, cataract surgery with ileal implantation requires adequate uh, pupil dilation and a stable mitriasis. So, in a recently published survey, stable mitriasis was rated as the most important factor by surgeons uh, when they were wanting to talk about their uh, safety of their cataract surgery. And a rapid onset of mitriasis was also considered a key factor in this survey. Despite the numerous advances in cataract surgery, mitriasis remains a foremost concern among cataract surgeons. And uh, complications of intraoperative meiosis, if it were to happen, uh, can be uh, significantly impactful for cataract surgeons. And uh, they can lead to complicated uh, cataract surgery, which could include iris trauma, back complications, and posterior capsular rupture, or breaking the rexis, or even uh, with or without uh, vitreous loss and uh, intraoperative complications of course may prolong the surgery increasing the risk for corneal decompensation complicating the surgery further and even the risk of uh, endophthalmitis and macular edema from iris trauma and increased surgical manipulations. Intraoperative meiosis and sequelae can further jeopardize the quality of eye implantation and there, there are on the visual outcomes for the patient. Today patients have become very demanding. They expect excellent visual results and very soon at that. So it becomes imperative to perform a quality cataract surgery for which a good mitriasis again becomes a very, very important factor. So not only is it important to have a good mitriasis at the start of the surgery, it's also very important to have a stable mitriasis through the procedure. And we do several things for that. We have been using topical mitriatics. We have been using uh, NSA drops and so many other things. And uh, here we can see that this is a stable mitriasis is a very, very important factor by, by most surgeons. It facilitates surgical maneuvers, uh, including cortical cleaning, capsular polishing, capsular excess, eye implantation. Even for toric eye a very, very important thing to have stable mitriasis because towards the end of surgery, if your pupil becomes small, it may become difficult and challenging to place your toric aisle properly. Uh, so a stable mitriasis uh, mitigates uh, intraoperative complications. And even in the 2013 European Observatory of Cataract Surge Surgery Survey, the importance of stable mitriasis during surgery was rated as 9 on a 10 point scale. The overall results of this survey also indicate that stable mitriasis was more important to surgeons than the largest size of dilation to begin with. So even for me, if I have a good, uh, fairly good sized pupil through surgery, that's more important than starting off with a very, very big pupil, which you don't really need. Now, we've been all using topical mitriasis um, over the last few decades. And of course, it has worked well for us. And uh, with the availability of good uh, mitriatic drops over the last 10, 15 years, uh, we've been uh, Traditionally, the, this is traditionally the most commonly practiced technique and is easily available. Uh, however, it takes time and uh, we all understand that patients can need to use uh, topical mitriatic drops starting an hour or two before surgery with frequent uh, installation for those of uh, those of the patients who did not get a good uh, you know, dilatory effect. And uh, sometimes the surgery can get delayed or even postponed. And then there is, of course, uh, with topical mitriatic drops, there is limited bioavailability. And multiple doses of the eye drops of various drops, you know, which could include phenylephrine, tropicamide, NSA drops, even topical uh, anesthetic drops towards the end can damage ocular surface and possibly cause superficial keratopathy. So as, as we all understand today, we don't like to use too many topical medications on the cornea because it impacts uh, the ocular surface and thereon leads to a dry eye as well. Uh, even allergies at that uh, to that matter and inconsistent mitriasis and intraoperative pupil meiosis in challenging cases can happen when you have used mitriatic drops to begin with. Uh, we also cannot underscore or underestimate the importance of systemic absorption. Occasional patients have bad allergies to these topical medications. So all these things actually limit the benefits that we can accrue from uh, topical mitriatic drops. So if there was a better way, I'm sure all of us would be so happy to kind of uh, take that into our surgical armamentarium. So is there any alternative? 
Well, of course, uh, you know, we do have uh, availability of intracameral. We've used in the past intracameral adrenaline, which used to be diluted, but that was full of, um, you know, problems with the endothelial damage and everything. So everybody has been very wary of that. Other things have been tried. And um, I feel that intracameral injection of a quality mitriatic can be a very good alternative to topical mitriatics if it becomes available. And yes, now we do have a good option. I've been uh, delving with it for the last couple of years and uh, help with the research of this molecule. Um, I have no financial interest, of course, but uh, I would love to give you my uh, take home uh, on these uh, on this intracameral mitriatics. So a prompt onset of pupil dilation is what would help because uh, intracamerally it uh, immediately acts and gives you uh, you know much more rapid uh, response. It also tends to give you a very stable mitriasis because you've used it right before when you're starting the surgery. So it tends to last through the surgery. Uh, it's also very useful during crucial steps, uh, which all through like the rexis, nucleus removal, the cortex removal, IOL implantation. And of course, you know, if it becomes necessary to supplement it at any point during the surgery, it is not difficult to do that because it acts really fast. So, uh, you know, if you need to supplement it during the last part of the surgery, it is not difficult to do that at all. It's a very safe and effective alternative with less risk of systemic uh, exposure because the dose is really, really small and systemic absorption from the nasal lacrimal duct and the uh, nasal mucosa can also be much, much limited. And of course, the since it, uh, the drug that I'm going to talk about contains also lignocaine, so it causes significantly less pain. So it does, serves a dual purpose. Not only does it, does it give you a very, very good uh, rapid onset stable mitriasis, it also gives you intracameral anesthetic effect. So patients are, uh, under topical anesthesia who are getting operated will have a very, very comfortable journey through their surgery. So. Uh, if we try to compare intracameral uh, uh, intracameral uh, injection of uh, mitriatics versus the topical mitriatics, 95% uh, of the pupil dilation was achieved in several studies with a mean of 28.6 seconds after administration of the intracameral mitriatic. And the mean pupil diameter was larger than 7 millimeters during the entire surgical procedure. This is when we did not use any topical mitriatics. The intraoperative pupil diameter remained stable in the intracameral combination group and decreased through the over the surgical period in the topical group and there was no clinically significant change in pupil diameter uh, in the majority of intracameral combination group compared with the topical group so let's see uh, mean time of pupil dilation estimated for intracameral is 28.6 seconds versus about almost as we all know 20 minutes for topical that's that's in a good patient so Several studies have been done on this combination of uh, tropicamide, uh, phenylephrine and lignocaine and uh, they have shown the safety of these procedures. They have been done at uh, reputed centers across the world and this is one of the studies uh, which was uh, published uh, some time back recently. Another one uh, of the evaluation of the efficacy and safety of a standardized intracameral combination of mitriatics and anesthetics. So this combination is what makes it uh, wonderful because it achieves uh, all that we want in a good safe catheter surgery. I would love to share. I wanted to share with you this uh, interesting case of a uh, elderly lady who was due for a cataract surgery, but she was allergic to almost all possible topical medications, including all the mitriatics and even antibiotic drops. So we had to postpone her surgery twice before we finally managed to do this uh, using no preoperative uh, topical medication at all and uh, was taken up for surgery with uh, uh, use of uh, intracameral phenocaine plus and uh, you'll be able to see that this pupil was uh, really small to begin with and uh, you can see that uh, we put phenocaine plus there and you can see the pace of mitriasis in real time and uh, it really works well and you have to try it to believe it and you can see that uh, we've achieved good mitriasis even with just one installation of 0.2 ml of the medication so with that, we could complete the surgery very, very easily. The mitriasis was very stable through the procedure. We did not have to use uh, phenocaine a second time. And you can see that I will implantation and everything was completed very, very easily. So this patient uh, went off really well and uh, we were very happy with the final outcome. So when operating uh, 
small pupil cases, uh, we tend to fall back to one of several uh, devices which could include iris hooks, uh, Malukin's ring, uh, some of the other rings which are available, even the recently introduced Bhattacharji ring. Now, these devices are great when uh, you know you need to uh, operate upon a patient where their surgery is not possible due to poor mitriasis and topical mitriatics don't work at all. However, they are time consuming and uh, they may require you to uh, you know have use and they are of course additional cost as well and uh, many of these cases can be actually managed by just trying to use phenocane plus uh, before uh, going on to use one of these devices. So uh, let me take you on to some of the other surgeries there where we phenocane plus uh, saved and uh, this was one such case where uh, we were able to uh, get a good outcome and uh, you can see here that uh, this patient had a hard brown black cataract and uh, we could uh, you know we could not achieve good mitriasis to begin with uh, even with the best uh, mitriatics and uh, as soon as we washed out the trip and blue we realized that the pupil had become even smaller so at this point we decided to put in viscoelastic which obviously helped with a little bit of mitriasis but at this point uh, phenocane plus was uh, used as well and uh, we were able to get a slightly better mitriasis as you can see this is now phenocane plus uh, being introduced as we were expecting a slightly longer surgery and a more challenging surgery because of the hardness of the cataract you can see that it's a supra hard cataract of course this cataract i'm trying to show you at a higher speed so that it will save us time just to show you that uh, how difficult it was. Uh, it obviously took much more time than what is evident here. Uh, this is running at four times the normal speed just to save time for the presentation. And at this point, uh, we've managed to, we've reached a situation where, uh, you know, pupil has become small again. We again introduce a little bit of uh, phenocane plus and you can see that now we have uh, definitely a much better pupil than we had uh, just prior to introducing phenocane plus again. So this pupil size is actually adequate to proceed with the surgery and phenocane plus can be used uh, additionally once or twice if required in that same quantity of 0.2 ml. Uh, it has been proven to be very, very safe in all our cases where we had to use it a second or a third time. We did perform endothelial counts on all our patients who were used with, uh, operated with phenocane plus and we did not see any further uh, loss specular uh, loss of endothelial counts as would be expected from a routine cataract surgery you can see that now we still have excellent mitriasis and uh, when we started off this patient's pupil was actually just about 3.54 millimeter after having used topical medications for almost two hours prior to surgery so phenocane plus can actually give you much better mitriasis even when my topical mitriatics have been used first so it's definitely worth trying to do that uh, when you are operating now going on to a second surgery which I thought uh, would be uh, nice to share with you. Uh, this was again another patient where uh, this patient had been, uh, up the cataract surgery had been aborted by another surgeon and referred to us. And uh, we patient had had a PC rent as you can see there. And uh, this patient needed to be managed. Uh, we put in Priamsinolone and uh, wanted to, there was no nucleus drop. There was a little bit of cortex which had gone uh, into the vitreous cavity and we were able to uh, get a hold on that with the vitrector and clear off the vitreous completely. And you can see that intraoperatively because this patient must have had some inflammation, he was referred to us and we were operating this patient two days after the prior surgery uh, when he was referred. So we managed to get all the cortex out, but at this point we realized that the pupil had become really small. I wanted to check whether I can put a lens into the sulcus and uh, I felt that the rim was intact and I decided to go in with a three piece lens uh, to be put into the sulcus. Now, while we managed to get the lens in uh, over the iris plane, thinking that we'll be able to manipulate it into the eye at this point, but uh, it became very challenging because the uh, haptic would slip each time and that Every time I would try to put it back, the tone of the pupil was very strong. The pupil was very tense, so it would not allow me to position the haptic inside. At this point, we decided to use Phenocane Plus to our rescue. And uh, as soon as we put Phenocane Plus, you can see the pupil dilating almost uh, within seconds. So while we did not get a huge pupil, but it became much easier for us to manage this because the tone, uh, string trick tone was uh, much less now and it became so much easier for us to manipulate the haptic 
into the sulcus as you can see on first attempt we were able to put that in and the pupil size is fairly adequate now enough for us to negotiate the optic inside and get a view of the you know periphery of the capsule as well and with that we were able to manage to we would manage to get the IOL into the sulcus and it saved the day for us because we would have had to fall back on iris hooks or some other thing and uh, this way we, you know in complex situations where you are in a tight situation phenocaine plus can save the day pretty often and uh, I've enjoyed uh, using that for many of our way whenever we are stuck with uh, you know refractory pupil floppy iris syndrome small pupils it actually saves the day for us and I want to share one more case with, uh, which will be the last case now this I do a lot of femto assisted surgeries as well this patient as soon as we had done the femto assisted the femto uh, procedure patient was moved on to the OT table and we realized that suddenly the patient this is not uh, unusual you can get sudden uh, meiosis uh, post uh, femto procedure and that makes the surgery more challenging this was a very hard cataract as well so at this point we decided to take help of phenocain plus you can see the pupil size has become smaller than the rexis and uh, now we'll be able to see how the pupil is dilating even while we are going through the steps so you can see that now the pupil has gone much beyond the rexis size within seconds and we were able to remove the cataract. It was a hard cataract. We could get it out quite easily and uh, it became um, nice for us to save the day again. In a femto case, uh, you don't want to uh, you know, introduce more devices because it prolongs the procedure as well. And uh, I think so many times I have to be grateful to uh, Phenocane Plus for having saved the day. And uh, this was another example. So I think uh, with that, I've uh, managed to convey what I wanted to convey. This is what it looks like, and uh, it comes in a pack of five and vials. Uh, I'm grateful to uh, NTOD, which has introduced this product into the Indian market and also into the international market. It contains tropicamide 0.02%, phenylephrine 0.31%, and lignocaine, uh, lidocaine uh, hydrochloride 1%. And uh, I think uh, it has been an amazing uh, you know, tool for uh, us cataract surgeons. Uh, in fact, I had to push them to, you know, expedite the availability in the markets in India. Uh, luckily, they are available in the, across Europe, but it took more time to be introduced in India. So, intracameral midriatic anesthetic combinations can be extremely useful to make cataract surgery safer and more predictable. One can potentially avoid topical midriatics completely with almost immediate mitriasis and good anesthetic effect achieved by the use of phenocaine plus. I have started doing that in a good number of my patients. It can also be used effectively for tackling intraoperative meiosis instead of devices like iris hooks and rings. So suppose you have a patient where you have intraoperative sudden meiosis, you might want to use phenocaine plus before you go on to device like iris hooks and rings. In fact, small pupil cases can be managed by first trying phenocaine plus before moving on to any of the devices. It works well in majority of the cases and you can actually get away without using one of the devices. And uh, phenocaine plus combination has been proven safe by several published studies, as I showed you. And at our center, over three years and almost 1,200 cases that we have done using phenocaine plus, and we've been quite happy. And uh, it's been a safe procedure. I hope uh, the uh, presentation was useful to you. And uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention.